Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Well, we are going to talk about Colin Kaepernick. Now, as you know, he's a free agent, and he did a 40-minute workout in front of representatives from eight different NFL teams. That workout happened on Saturday. Now, here's what he had to say. I've been ready for three years. I've been denied for three years. We all know why I came out here, showed it today in front of everybody. We have nothing to hide. So we're waiting for the 32 owners, the 32 teams, Roger Goodell, all of them to stop running. We're out here, we're ready to play. We're ready to go anywhere. My agent, Jeff Nally, is ready to talk to any team. I interview with any team at any time. I've been ready, I'm staying ready, and I'll continue to be ready. All right, now the workout was originally scheduled to take place at the Falcons facility, but at the last minute, Colin Kaepernick's camp switched the venues. There was a disagreement, and that all had to do with the liability waiver and media availability, and there were other factors as well. Now, the NFL made their own statement saying that they were disappointed that uh, Colin Kaepernick actually switched venues. They said, we are so disappointed Hold on. That Colin did not appear for his workout. He informed us of that decision at 2.30 p.m. today, along with the public. Today's session was designed to give Colin what he has consistently said he wants, an opportunity to show his football readiness and desire to return to the NFL. 25 clubs were present for the workout, and all 32 clubs, their head coaches, general managers, and other personnel executives would have received video footage of the interview and workout shot by the Atlanta Falcons video crew. It is important to note the following. And then they went ahead and listed all the things that they did. Um, one of the issues was that Colin Kaepernick wanted to be able to have footage and have his own footage because I guess he didn't trust the NFL to release and not edit the footage to make him look bad. So I guess that was one of the issues. And then there was a standard liability waiver based on what they use with national invitational camps at all NFL combines and NFL clubs when trying out free agent players. And they tried to switch that up and submit their own. Well, Stephen A. Smith weighed in on all of these these discrepancies and here's what he said 25 teams show up at the atlanta falcons practice facility state of our facility nfl personnel equipment video everything and what does colin kaepernick do three hours before the workout because of some issue with a liability waiver colin kaepernick wants to change the venue colin kaepernick wants his own receivers colin kaepernick wants to video things himself he ain't done no interviews. He ain't talked to nobody. Media can't find him, but he wants the media available now. He don't want to play. He wants to be a martyr. It ain't working this time. Now, I'm, I'm not going to go as far as to say he doesn't want to play, but if he does want to play, he has a weird way of showing it. And, mm-hmm. if, and if Cap really wanted to play, then what he did Saturday was simply not a logical thing to do. Like, the best opportunity to get back in the league was to show up Saturday to Falcon Stadium, do your workout, and keep it moving. Not to mention, you would have really made the NFL look crazy if they didn't sign you because they put this whole Saturday workout together, 25-plus teams showed up, Cap goes out there and has a good showing, and he really makes the NFL look like they're colluding against him if they deny him. But when Ka- Kaepernick's agent was asked whether or not he thought that Kaepernick would get an opportunity to sign with the team anytime soon, he was very skeptical. He said, I hope so, but I don't know. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit pessimistic because I've talked to all 32 teams. I've reached out to them recently, and none of them have had any interest. I'll tell you this, no team asked for this workout. The league office asked for this workout. And so I guess they're not yeah. feeling really great about it. Oh, yeah, I read that statement, too. But also in that same statement, he says that the only reason he does have any sort of optimism is because the league put this together. And he said being at the league put it together that maybe Roger Goodell will, you know, uh, push one of these owners to sign him. I don't know. But you know how I feel after this weekend? Uh, I don't care. Uh, I don't know what Colin Kaepernick wants in regards to football, so uh-huh. I simply don't care. I, I support Cap in everything he does as far as activism. If he calls me to participate in his Know Your Rights camp tomorrow, I would be there. But as far as what happens to him in the NFL, I don't care. Because to me, yeah, it, 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 oh, go ahead, what you say? I was going to say Eric Reed, who is his former teammate, also responded to Stephen A. Smith, if you want to hear that. He said, Malcolm X said, if you're not careful, the newspapers will have you hating the people who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppressing. You embody this quote. You, Malcolm Jenkins and Jay-Z, prance around doing the NFL's bidding to try to bury Colin. I stand for truth and justice above all else. You are mistaken by thinking that because you or anybody is black that you are spared from my criticism, especially when you've been so blatantly on the NFL side and corrupting their own process to hinder Colin's employment. Well, let's let's open up the phone lines. Once again, I don't care. 
Yeah, because to me, like Colin Kaepernick's whole movement was never about him, you know, getting a job in the league. It was about him taking a stand for black and brown people who were getting killed at the hands of the police. That's what he brought awareness to. That's what this movement was about. That's what I care about. Somehow it turned into this whole thing about Cap not having a job. I'm off that. Well, let's open up the phone lines. What are your thoughts? 800-585-1051. What are your thoughts of Colin Kaepernick? Because think about it, right? You own an NFL team, right? Billion-dollar team. You know, they set up this workout. You get, you get your team to the Falcons Arena to watch this workout. And then right before the workout happens, what, an hour before, two hours before, they change facilities, which is an hour drive away. Mm-hmm. Do you take that hour drive or do you say, you know what, this 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 young man is playing games and I and I don't want this on my team? Or do you say, you know what? Yeah, he's... clearly a lot of people didn't make that drive. Right, only eight teams went. Because, you know, because a lot of people might be like, you know what, he's playing games. We came all out here to see the young brother play, to see if the young brother has an arm, to see yeah. if the young brother can still move and still has it. And then he changes last minute. Yeah, to change the venue uh, last minute, you know, hours before you were supposed to work out, even the pushback on the waiver at noon on a Saturday when you received the waiver on a Wednesday, that's just all like that's foolishness to me. It seems, like it's, it seems, yeah, me. It seems and, like it's not serious. And even the whole Cap wanted to control his his own narrative thing, like if you did exactly what people thought you was going to do, which is not show up, that's not controlling your narrative. Like right. Cap did exactly what a lot of people thought he was going to do, and that's not show up or just find a way to, you know, self-sabotage, as they say. So if you do exactly what someone thinks you're going to do, that's not controlling your narrative. But do I do understand this, and I don't know how true this is. If I'm a quarterback, and I don't trust the NFL. First of all, if I didn't trust the NFL, I wouldn't want to play. But what? if I didn't trust the NFL and they are the one that's controlling the footage, I would want my own cameras there too. Absolutely. I would want to make sure that they just don't show the the, the time I overthrew the receiver or the time Absolutely. I didn't make it to the receiver. They're all the bad clips. I would want to make sure that they showed everything. So maybe I would want my cameraman there as well. But changing that, it, it just seems like would I want that on my team? Would I want that problem? Is that going to be a problem? Is, is, is it going to be one of those things if he has a, a bad day, he just doesn't show up? Like, those are the things that I would think about if I own a team. And and you said something, too. You talked about trust, man. Like, you know, me, I, I think that Colin Kaepernick is bigger than football, so I honestly don't even know why he wants to still be a part of this league that he, you know, says is blackballing him. But I don't care mm-hmm. because there will never be trust between the league and Cap. And if there's no right. trust, there's really no relationship. Right. And you in know response what I'm to that... In response to that video, the NFL did say in their whole statement that they did agree to put out all of the raw footage from uh-huh. the entire event. They said that it's unprecedented, but they confirmed they would receive both the video that would be sent to all 32 clubs yeah, I as well as I wouldn't trust them. Yeah, yeah, if, if I was captain, I wouldn't trust if them. I ain't trust Absolutely. Them. Yeah. I wouldn't trust that if I was captain. No way. Well, let's I would have definitely the recorded my own footage. 800-585-1051. Hello, who's this? What's up, Benny? Good morning, Yee. Good morning to God. Good morning. How y'all doing? This is Keith. What's up, Keenan? What's up, brother? What do you think about Kaepernick and the situation over the weekend? Yo, don't get me wrong when I say this, man. You know, Uh-oh. I respect the brother in the narrative, what he was doing when he had the dashiki on, the corn rolls, and all that good stuff. But even though he got down his knee, the stuff still happening every day. The man ain't been in the league in a couple years. I mean, he's like a prima donna the way he was acting over the weekend, man. I mean, the XFL is about to start. He can always go to the ring of football, man. But the only two words I got for is, who cares, man? That's how I feel all at right, this bro. point. I'm going to be honest with you. I just don't care no more. 800-585-1051. What do you think about the cap in this situation? Call us now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hello, who's this? What's up? This is Dre from Ohio. What's going on? Hey, Dre, what do you think about Kaepernick's workout? Hey, I, I tell him, I said, I think he set himself back by doing that. He he could have went through with it the way the NFL set it up and, uh, and you know, put some things in place by, before Saturday. You know, I'm a military veteran. I'm a law enforcement officer right now, and I wasn't offended by the stance he took. I was actually proud that he, you know, he did it. But there's a way to go about things in last minute stuff. That wasn't the way to do it. I think he set himself back and kind of probably blew his chance to get back. Yeah, you can't change you, the venue hours before you're nah. supposed to work out and push back on the waiver at noon on a Saturday when you receive the waiver on a Wednesday. Like that's all foolishness to me. Hello, who's this? Um, anonymous. Okay, why are you anonymous? Um, because. I kind of have a little inside knowledge about what's going on. Okay, so I know someone who knows someone that works for the NFL. Okay. And apparently the word on the street is that the NFL was going to make a team sign Pollen by today. Like that they were going to pretty much force it, I guess. Um, I don't know the details of the deal or whatever, but they were working it out. And the thing is there were – black people behind it. It wasn't even the white people in the NFL that was trying to do this. It was black people that were working behind the scenes to make this happen for him because they believed, okay, once he's still in shape 
and two, like, he, he was done wrong. So they were working behind the scenes to make this happen, and he just kind of spit in everybody's face. Hey, let me tell you something, sister. First of all, uh, you. what you're saying is absolutely correct, and it's not even, like, behind-the-scenes knowledge. That is so goddamn obvious. They put together this whole big showcase right. on a Saturday. You know why? Because they know this man has been done wrong the last three years. You know, There was no other way to do it other than to make it this kind of spectacle. And, yes, they would have signed him this week. It was so obvious to everybody. All he had to do was show up. But guess what he did? He did exactly what a lot of people were saying he was going to do, and that was find a way to sabotage the situation. And, he, and, 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 and that's what hurts me the most about this, because when you talk about controlling your own narrative, controlling your narrative is not doing what everybody thinks you're going to do anyway. Right. You know and according to TMZ, they, they say that Jay-Z was disappointed, according to TMZ, with Colin Kaepernick. And they felt like he was unhappy with the way things went down because he feels the league was genuine in trying to give Colin an opportunity. Yo, the league was not going to put on this whole big dog and pony show on Saturday only to deny this man an opportunity. They right. weren't going to do it. Cap, we all know Cap is in shape. We all know Cap can throw the ball. They did this whole big thing on a Saturday. Over three-fourths of all the teams in the league show up. All Cap had to do was go to Falcon Stadium, do his workout, keep it moving. He would have got signed. There's no question people, about it. A lot of people on the phones. We'll take some more calls and come back. 800-585-1051. We're talking the Kaepernick situation. Hello, who's this? Uh, Kenny. Hey, Kenny. What's your thoughts on the on Kaepernick situation, bro? Uh, good morning, guys. How's, uh, how y'all doing? I hope you guys are doing great. But, uh... I agree with what Charlemagne was saying. Like in any kind of relationship, uh, trust is the foundation, and and I think it's fundamentally broken in this in this situation. So obviously he doesn't trust his camp doesn't trust the NFL. The NFL owners don't trust him just because of all the issues that have happened with the kneeling and all that stuff. So I'm not even sure why they're even trying because everybody can pretty much see that this is just the PR thing for both sides. Okay. They're both trying to look good and not trying to look bad to the fans and. At the end of the day, it's not going to work out. No, I'm not going to want somebody that that's going to be making all kinds of demands when I'm paying you, and you know he's not going to want to you know concede to their demands because he wants to have some control over how he's portrayed in the in the media just because of everything that's happened. So it's never going to work out, unfortunately. All right, thank you, brother. Hello, who's this? Yeah, this is Tip Man coming out of Crown Heights, Brooklyn, yo. What's up, bro? What you think about the Kaepernick situation, bro? Man, let me tell you something, man. This man went through all this trouble kneeling. He got the whole racist United States of America against him. And then now when he wants to control the narrative of how he wants to be depicted, you got people that want to try to discredit his motion and his movement. Either you're going to stand behind Kaepernick, man, or just get out the way. Stop talking about whatever black people do that they try to stand up for themselves, man. All right. Thank you, brother. Got one more call. Hello, who's this? What up, Del? This is E from the D. What's up? E from the D. <laughs> What's up, my G? We're talking Kaepernick, bro. What's your thoughts? Oh, man. My, my thing is, based on the gravity of the situation, how big it was, and based on how big the story was, I don't think that uh, Stephen A should have lashed out like Adam like that based on a couple of questionable actors. Now, Based on what he got blackballed for, I don't think it takes one of our own back of our own based on what Cap was protesting for. Now, don't get me wrong, some of the things he did Saturday might have been questions like changing the venue, but that's just paranoia based on what the past actions of the NFL has been. So you can't really blame a brother for that, for being paranoid. But I don't think it, take, it should have been one of our own to go out there and say he's bad news based on what he was protesting for because it's pretty much attacking our own, man. We don't need to be doing that based on what he was uh, protesting for. I mean, y'all ain't got to agree with that, man, but that's just my view. Okay. okay. Thank you, brother. So what's the moral And nobody of the story? has a wrong opinion here, by nah, the way. No, not at all. I mean, the moral of the story for me is, you know, um, he capped it exactly what a lot of people thought he was going to do, and that's not show up. Uh, or do something to sabotage himself. And if you do exactly what someone thinks you're going to do, that's not controlling your narrative. This is just me. The best way to control your narrative is to is to not show up at all. Just say, no, I don't want to try out. I don't want to work out. I won't be involved at all. But I really want you to know and everybody else out there to know that's listening. I don't care. Charlemagne the God does not care anymore. I don't care about the NFL and Colin Kaepernick. I care about Cap's activism. I'll support him in that, but when it comes to football, I don't care. This movement was never about Cap getting a job. It was about him standing up for black and brown people and the injustice that they were facing at the hands of the police. I have his, I have his back 100% when it comes to that, but when it comes to him in the NFL, I just simply don't care no more, bro.
All right. Now, yeah, we got rumors on the way? Yes, nine orgasms in one day. Find out who did that for their lady. All right. We'll get into that next. Keep it locked. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. 